So I have a question about the ocean. <laughs> um, if, because uh, as that metaphor extends to, you know, whatever your your concept of the of the divine essence uh, of life is, I I think part of the dialogue problem that exists between religions is that we don't have a good, or many people don't have a good self awareness or an awareness of their their feeling about that of uh, God or however you name God in your religious tradition, uh, and there and and there is a great discomfort about the discussion of of God. Uh, or, or a concept, however, you know, again, I'm new to this kind of discussion, so I don't have all the language, but, but that, that, uh, in essence, we can have a lot of different kinds of dialogue, um, but without that sense of a presence greater than, than oneself, sort of holding, that, that ocean holding us together, how do these dialogues move forward? Um, and, and so, um, and, you know, what what binds them together? If we don't have the ocean, how do these international dialogues or these personal dialogues um, move forward? And I, uh, okay, I, I, good. Yeah, question. I'm not sure how what how to phrase that question, but that seems to me uh, it's the uh, other end of the discussion that from what we were just having. No, that's without a, that basis. That's a good question, Jessica, and it's a very practical question. If you get people together who may not have the ocean consciousness. Um, how how does one move forward with that? Um, Prita or Swami, Swamiji, do you have any uh, comments? Prita, do you have any comments? I, I have a comment. Uh, if I, am I on? Yeah, you're on. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, oh. okay. No, just a, a brief comment. The point is, it would, that's a very valid objection. Uh, the, the thing is, how do you, if you don't have this idea of an ocean, if you are uh, conscious only of the different kinds of waves and, and uh, the foam and the bubbles and this and that, uh, the spray, and you don't realize that it's all one, one reality, uh, how does that help? You know, we are told it is one reality, but I don't experience it as such, so how does that help me? That's a very valid question. And the, uh, the recommendation is that it is possible to experience that. In other words, you don't, even though we're buffeted about by the uh, physical nature of the ocean, the waves and the foam and all of that, how do we de how do we determine how do we discover that actually it's everything is water even though it looks so different it is all water how do we discover that and that is that is the uh, province of uh, religion per se and that that is by discovering that the water nature how do you discover the water nature by calming the mind and the uh, the illustration is given, which I always give, and which is so appropriate. If you have a lake and you, uh, when you come there and the wind is blowing, you see uh, the surface of the lake, you see everything, you see the blue sky, you see reflected the mountains and everything all around it. You see everything that's around the lake that's reflected by the water, you see everything on the surface. But the one thing you don't see is what's, what the, what's inside the water, what's inside the lake. For that, you have to calm the, the wind. If the wind ever stops, then you no longer see the reflections from the surface. You don't see the reflected um, uh, hills and forests and clouds and sky, but you see something which was not visible at all as long as the wind was blowing, and that's the what's in the water uh, you see every suddenly you see every pebble on the bottom of the lake in great clarity uh, the water is so quiet that uh, the, the reflections are gone what's really the real nature what's within that lake now you can see clearly which you could not see at all before so that's the idea of meditation the purpose is to 
uh, calm the waves of the mind so that uh, when the waves have stopped, you see what is in the mind, what is being hidden by the presence of the waves. And that, uh, that is the, actually the existence, the water nature, you could say, it's the reality within. And uh, so uh, that is the idea of, of uh, yoga, to calm the mind so that its real nature becomes perceptible to us. It's no longer a theory, but you actually see it to be such. You actually see the ocean as water. You see the water nature, the reality of every phenomenon. And that is the purpose of religion, to be able to see God within the manifestation. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, Prita is next, and then Charles. I just wanted to comment that as you were speaking, Swamiji, I'm, I'm thinking of the, um, the service space uh, motto uh, that um, change yourself, change the world, that uh, we begin with ourselves. And uh, Prita, let's see, you wanted to speak next, so you are on. Yeah, I was just going to actually reflect on that as well. It's interesting because, and, and I say this with, I, I think, a fair amount of uh, self-awareness of my own limitations here, um, which is I tend to lead a lot with the brain, and that becomes, that becomes difficult and a distraction in trying to do some of this work that we're talking about. So I think the question, if, as I understood it, was when people don't, aren't attuned to the ocean, the, a certain view of kind of the ocean nature and all, how do you, how can you have those kind of meaningful dialogues with them? And I'm, I, I think it's really to just be and not to try and sit, not to, not to try and convince them or any, there's nothing one can say that can um, open one's mind to that. It's just revealing that being that and opening one's heart to that. And again, I say that with all humility about my own limitations in that area. Uh, on this president's advisory council, actually Nippon, um, Meta and I are both on that. And at our last meeting, I was very struck uh, in terms of our different approaches. We, I, we laughed that we, we kind of delivered a, we think a, an effective one, two punch in that I kind of presented. And we, we coordinated in advance, which was that I would kind of present some ideas that we wanted to lead with, with the head. And I kind of talked about it in government speak, policy speak, and kind of all the ways in which we should do it. And then, Nippon brought, Nippon, Nippon brought it all home by just speaking from the heart. And he said the same thing, and he had everybody eating out of his hands. <laughs> so it was just, again, it was the, the, the distinct, our different approaches. And I think um, in, in settings where people aren't necessarily open to those ideas, I think it's Nippon's approach of just being um, that really opens people to that. Ah, so one approach is bring the uh, Prita Nipun team uh, <laughs> onto onto the site. Thank you, Prita. Uh, Charles, you wanted to um, speak, yes. Yes, um, I wanted to address uh, sort of uh, uh, what Swamiji said and also what Prita said. Uh, I used to focus more formally on interfaith dialogue and activities and I've noticed that I've kind of naturally moved away from formal kinds of processes in the last few years. And in my own classes, what I've found to be effective is to ask people to silently reflect or meditate or contemplate. I, it's, it's contemplation, but so I use different words because not everybody's happy with the word meditate or contemplate. But very human questions. How do they experience, how do people experience grief and suffering and love and uh, disappointment? Really looking at it from a, a kind of human level. But when you do it with a quiet, when you start with a quiet mind and then you reflect on those questions, it naturally brings many people to the ocean. So you don't even have to bring up the ocean. You don't even have to necessarily bring up religion. But if you bring that still mind uh, to inquiry, to really important human questions, it often just leads to the ocean, the water. 